Now, before you watch this video, I'm not saying that you should quit your engineering job. This is what I decided to do. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Developing as Dr. K. I'm not really gonna give you guys a story time. I'm just gonna tell you guys what happened. The short and skinny of it is, I had a job as a software engineer and I left to go to graduate school. Now here's what happened. So if you guys remember in a previous video, I told you guys that I already knew I wanted to go to graduate school. So it wasn't really a question of if I was going for me, it was more so a question of when I was going. So in my final semester at Auburn University, I had just got off of the internship from a big consulting firm and I loved it. I had a great time, uh, but I knew that, you know, I still wanted to go to graduate school. So I was trying to prepare my mind to get in that kind of frame but I also knew that there was a reality that I might not get into a graduate program that I wanted to get into or that I felt comfortable in or that I found an advisor in that I wanted to work with. So I figured that I should also apply for jobs. And the internship that I had the summer before my final semester at Auburn, I did receive a full-time <laughs> offer and it was a fabulous offer, it was great. I was very proud um, and I was very fortunate to get the offer, um, but I was reluctant to accept it because I knew that I wanted to go to graduate school. Read through all the terms of this software engineering position. The location was exactly where I wanted to be. That was no problem. Now, where the problem lied was when I read the terms of the contract and they were terms that I just did not want to agree to. People, people. When you get a contract, you need to read it, okay? No matter who it's from, even if you're going to the post office to drop off a delivery, read your contracts, read the things that you are putting your name on and signing yourself up for because you never know. So I didn't like the terms of the contract and I turned down that offer. I'm still, you know, studying for the GRE, sending in applications for fellowships and for graduate schools, I'm preparing all the things, calling the admissions teams and things like that. And then graduation uh, comes and I decide, you know, that I'm gonna put a pause on applying to jobs, on applying to grad school, everything. I'm just gonna chill for a month or two. Now, this is December, 2019. Y'all remember December, 2019? Remember what was happening around December, 2019? Mm -hmm. Okay, December 2019, I wasn't thinking anything about COVID because it wasn't here yet, or so we, we thought. All I knew is I was tired. I had been in school for six and a half years in college, and I just really needed a break. So I took two months, I didn't do a thing. At the end of those two months, I started getting a little fidgety. So I started reading papers from advisors and I start setting up several meetings and talks with advisors and members of their lab. Also, I start applying for jobs. At the beginning of March, I got some callbacks. So I did some interviews and I was receiving some offers, some offers I had to turn down because they weren't paying me what I knew I deserved as an engineer. If I was going to take a job, I was going to be a software engineer and I was going to do it, you know, at a place that was paying me well. I did receive an offer from a firm that I thought was giving me a pretty good salary, um, not as high as my first offer, but it was a good salary for the location and it was nearby home. So I figure, you know, if I had to end up, you know, leaving to go to graduate school, this is a great opportunity for me because I don't have to get an apartment somewhere else and try to move all my stuff and all that. It's the beginning of March. So things start shutting down in March and I'm getting a little nervous about if I should really be taking a job now 
and going into the office and interacting with people and things like that. But I go ahead and I decide to accept the offer um, because I really like the terms. I like everything surrounding it. Um, so I took the offer. So because I was in Georgia, a lot of things weren't being taken as seriously as in other places. So I pushed out my start date for about two weeks after things had shut down. I had my own closed door office, so I felt more comfortable with that. Two weeks after the US shut down, I started my job as a software engineer. I was a full stack engineer, which means I worked on the front end and the back end. Um, for those of you that are not in tech, it's like you look at a website on your computer, right? What you see is what we call the front end. That, that's like the, the things that you see. Now, what you don't really see is when you push a button, where does that information go to? How that information is processed, things like that. So the, the, the back end is the how that information is processed and where it goes to. But I was kind of working on how it was processed and what you see as a user. The firm that I was working for was a private consultant. I can't tell you like what the projects were or anything like that. Um, yes. I'm gonna walk away from that conversation. So now here comes late April and they tell us that we all have to start working from home. So I start working from home and I, I love it still. Like I'm, I'm liking that I'm doing software engineering things and it's great, you know. I get to work from home so I'm saving money. They kind of have us like on a hybrid schedule where we're working from home and we're working in person sometimes. Finally, I start getting some notifications back, maybe late April, early May. I start getting notifications back from the grad schools that I applied to. I applied to, I think, five programs and I got into three of them. There was one where I had spoken to the advisor and they had kind of seemed a little bit off, like something wasn't right. So I, something just didn't feel right with that school. So I decided to not go there. I had two schools left. It was really a matter of where I felt that I could thrive more. So I chose the University of Illinois at Chicago. This was probably like early May. I didn't tell anybody at work. I was doing my work. I was doing well, doing a good job, you know, receiving kudos and all those things. And it was great, but I really wasn't fulfilled. I liked my job, but I didn't like what I was working on. So I liked programming. I liked coming up with solutions. I liked problem solving but I knew I wanted to do research, right? I knew that I wanted to go to grad school and become a professor. So that was always kind of in the back of my mind and I would carry that with me to work. I enjoyed the problem solving and that was great. I even enjoyed learning from other people that had been there longer than I had. The company was nice. Like people were very kind. They had known the business, they had known each other. So they were very welcoming but I was still carrying with me my passions and my hopes and dreams every day, right? So part of me was sad, you know, I'm not where I, you know, where I want to be yet, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. So I didn't say anything. I just kept, you know, doing what I was supposed to do. You know, as time went on, eventually I was going to have to say something, right? <laughs> because I had accepted this offer at this school. So eventually, I think about June rolls, yeah, mid to late June rolls around. I knew that I wanted to take two weeks off before I go to school. And I knew that I also had to give them two weeks notice. So at the end of June, I told my direct manager that i this is my two weeks notice. I'm going to grad school. Uh, I'll catch you on the flip. And they were very supportive of me. Didn't have any, you know, ill will or anything like that. So it was a very smooth transition for me. Of course, they were all like, oh, we're so sad to see you go and things like that. And there were a few people that had some thoughts about me going to Chicago because, you know, people always hear these things about Chicago, but Chicago's a very big place it's probably not like your city. Wherever you're from, it's probably not like that. Chicago has several 
sub cities within a city. Like really, when you think about it, the job of the news is to highlight some one specific thing, right? And the one thing that they were highlighting wasn't good most of the time. <laughs> but outside of the concerns that people had, they were all very supportive of me going to graduate school because it was an engineering firm. Um, and a lot of them had doctorates themselves. So it was pretty smooth. I'm glad I did it. I don't regret it. Even though I've had hard times in school, I also faced some difficulty at work, you know? I didn't face as many microaggressions because a lot of people weren't there. It was very far and few in between. People made a really big effort to be inclusive and to, to be helpful, right? Um, but still, you know, people have their own biases and assumptions and things like that. So of course that was there a little bit. Um, and the same thing at school, I have definitely faced plenty of overt um, discriminatory practices as well as um, microaggressions. You know, and it hasn't always been from who I would expect it to come from. It's just no matter where you go, you're going to face something. I'm not telling you to quit your engineering job. I'm just saying this is what happened to me. I'm in grad school because I want to be, not because I needed more money. Like some people are like, oh, well, you don't need to go to graduate school because you're not going to make any additional money or the, the money that you make is not going to cover the fees or the money that you make, it's not going to be worth it. For some reason, a lot of people have been pushing the narrative that people don't hire PhDs. First of all, I didn't need a pay raise. I had, I was making good money at my engineering job. And yes, I quit an engineering salary to take a grad student salary. If you know, you know, a big plummet. <laughs> For two, I don't, I don't see engineers having a hard time getting a job ever. You have to know what kind of engineering role you're looking for. If you're looking for a researcher role, there are companies that have research centers. And when you get your PhD, that's what you're doing, right? You're doing research. You're learning to be an expert, to be a voice on something. Not having a job as an engineer with a PhD is very not likely. And lastly, you don't need a PhD. You don't need a graduate degree in engineering. You don't need that to do most engineering jobs. They do have professional exams for that, the FE and the PE that you can take to get certified where you don't need those things. But if that's not your goal, if your goal is not to be a designer or to be something like that, you actually want to be an expert or a researcher or that's, that's why you go to grad school. <laughs> but it's okay also to, to not go to grad school uh, and just pursue your goals of climbing up the corporate ladder. There's nothing wrong with either way. It's just a preference kind of thing. So I hope that you guys learned a little bit today, that you will come back for more. Um, check out some of my other videos and, and I'll see you.